I'm going to go file import image sequence. And uh, I find this folder that contains all these images. So there are many images uh, because this whole, whole folder is an image set, an image stack. I click on one uh, and open and it will detect all 97 images in this folder. Uh, and as I go click OK, it will take some time to load. Now, depending on your computer situation, uh, it may struggle, uh, but you just have to sort of try and see. And um, if your computer has a struggle opening up all 97, you might want to divide it into two, two halves, for example, or you might want to shrink the size of individual images. So that's now loaded. So instead of one single image, we've got this tab down the bottom, uh, which you can use to slide through different images. So this is one image. This is next 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 image. And there are 96 of them in this whole step. Yeah, are you okay with that? Up to this point? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, what it is, is that uh, it's a black and white image acquired on the confocal microscope. With confocal microscope, it's taken multiple images, 97 images, at slightly different height. So between, say, step number one, and between number two, the stepping between number one and number two is um, six micrometers. So that's what it means in the title uh, step. So this between this one and this one, there's six, and between this one and the next one, there's six microns. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a 96 images with six microns in between. So we roughly have 600 micron thick image stack. So you're looking at the different height, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. on the same spot. Mm. Yeah. Um, this image is stained. Oh no, sorry. The sample is stained with um, a few different dye. But what you're seeing here is that microlectin, supposed to label blood vasculatures bright. Mm. You do, however, get a little background signal like here. You know these grayness here, uh, as well as these grayness here uh, because things sometimes do autofluoresce or give some background signal and that's that's unfortunately the way it is. I think it's quite helpful because it's showing the structure. The yeah absolutely I agree so so just by looking at this you can tell that this, this bit here is probably more central you know center of the modulus mm -hmm. and um, then this is roughly where the neurons are it's projecting outwards and and looking at this this bit of our autofluorescent here and this is probably around where the organ of porta is right this information in the file format here so six micron in the stack means that there's six microns between the images uh 1.69 micron per pixel now this is your what we call pixel resolution okay so what that means is that uh, in this image, um, one pixel is equal to 1.69 microns in real life. Now we can put this information uh, here, bit scale. So that was, uh, so that was, um, so actually first of all, I'm gonna go to image and property. Now this, this gives me information on what I think it's doing. So it's got a one channel, it's got sector 97 slices, um, and this is what it thinks that its units are. Mm -hmm. uh, so unit of length is microns, pixel width, uh, which is the pixel width, pix x, x length, pixel height is y, and, pix and voxel depth is uh, stepwise between the images down here, okay? So it's a depth. The pixel width is actually um, 1.69, so it's twice as big as that. I'm going to correct it, 1.69 um, microns per pixel. And then same thing, 1.69 microns per pixel. And voxel uh, is 6 micron stack, so 6 microns between the images. And OK, so that's corrected for that. So once you set that, at least for this day image, oh, 
It's done the conversion event. So I put it in one here, 1.69, and it's done pixels per micron. So it's, it's converted, but it's same thing. And then um, I can, for example, let's just to show you an example. Draw a line and analyze uh, what do I want to measure. Set measurement. Japanese ah, so, so the length is 50. So I think it me it thinks that it's 50 microns. Yeah. And then I can do it again. It's taken another another measurement. Thanks. The length is the length of that line. I don't quite know what the area is. And the mean, minimum, maximum. Uh, this is actually a great scale body. So uh, it's measuring how bright it is. Oh. Mm. Now if you put the cursor over here, um, you see you see this number here keeps on oscillating. So here, uh, the number value is 0 .0 0 0.0.0.0, 0 .0 so complete darkness is 0. And if I put it here, that's uh, 223 at the moment, and brightest white signal is 256. So on that scale, it's measuring grayscale values. And when I drew this line here, it's measured this values of the grayness along this line and it's determined what the average was and uh, what the minimum so darkest signal was and what was the brightest signal was. Right. Uh, so, so that kind of um, measurement I think can make uh, quite a lot of. Um, another thing I think, so this line is a, what we call selection uh, or region selection and if we go to selection uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff um, but the one I might just show you now is to go up to manager. So this is region of interest, ROI, region of interest manager. And it can, you can save your drawing. So if you want to say, use this to, for example, tra trace around the mm -hmm. line, And then, you know, my measurement was here before, the next selection is here. So you can save your um, selection lines. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you might say, okay, I'm going to measure. I'm going to measure. Good line, segmented line. So right click to change the fit between a different mode. I went from last straight line to segmented line, which is like a quick, 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 quick extension. And freehand is where you draw yourself. Um, and often it's freehand. Ah, uh, and I head. And then I put the another one right here. And then I can switch between the two. And okay, well, while I'm here, I want to measure. So I'm gonna measure. I know, oh, yeah, the length is 49. And for here, I'm gonna measure. Oh, the length is 1000, so I just drew a line across a whole millimeter and 1,000 uh, microns, and here, this vessel now, um, and a nice measure, so I can, I can get the links, right? Or you might want to do, oh no, I did something stupid. Um, I'll just destroy mine. Okay. One, 
it's good to save this because um, if you don't, you have to redraw that one. And now you can go. Oh, but you can do all at the same time. No one is major? No. <laughs> no, it's major. Okay, so that's that's the big here. Okay. Let's start it from, from here. You can do analyze media. Analyze media. Analyze media. Analyze media. Analyze media. Okay. And I can see, you know, I just measured the cross section at five different locations. And I could either compare or I could get average for, for these bits here. Yeah. yeah? Um, likewise, if you wanted to, you can, you know, draw a whole, whole bunch of things. And that, I think, will give you some area information, which may be useful. Mm -hmm. So measure and region manager. Uh, so region manager is select where you want to measure uh, and uh, use analyze method to get a quick cross section measurement at different locations. I think would be very very useful. Mm. Yeah. Right. Mm. So um, now the problem is that you've got so much going on here, right? Mm. Um, so a couple of things. Um, this is what we call image stack, and as um, we've seen, this ninety um, seven of them. And you you might think that oh, you know, why can't I see this part and this part all in one plane? Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to do that, you, there's a lot of things you can do here on the stack. Mm -hmm. And the one that I might draw your attention to is the Z projection. Uh, so if I click here. Um, it gives you option or oh, where do you want it well i want to first of all cover from first to the last so that's last stop size and i'm going to go max intensity so i want to see the brightest spot for mm -hmm. all the images between 1 and 97 and go, okay and it's generated just a new image mm -hmm. so if i compare with the stack so that was original mm -hmm. yeah and now it's a z projection so everything There you go. Can you, can you see what's happened? Yeah, so, so it's all sort of collapsed into one plane um, by picking the, all the brightest spots. Now it's gotten harder to see the dimmer features, like these fine vessels, which had um, less signal. So the less bright vessels became very hard to see because it's, it's been mixed in now with the background grayness. Yeah, um, but as for for the um, brighter ones, you could you can see it now in the whole image. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to just track down this guy uh, and how see branches, you know this is probably the image to go from. So you can simply go okay, well this branch is off here and here, and this guy branch is off there and there. Um, but it is collapsed image. So is this vessel here and is this vessel connected? Well, we can't tell from this image anymore. Uh, and likewise, this line, vertical line here and horizontal line here. Well, is this, uh, you know, overlapping, just the overlapping branch that's now um, projected into one image or is this uh, um, actually connected at that point? That information is no longer available uh, because you've collapsed it in one. If you wanted to measure the length of this curve, for example, or if you wanted to get a diameter here, 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 this is probably a better option to go with. Um, now, in doing that, you can go back to the original stack and say, oh, well, first of all, I want to look at this bit, this guy here. So that starts from this number in the one image to say um, 51. And so I might just do um, image stack Z projection 1 to 52 and do maximum intensity. 
Okay, so so that really highlights here. And then I might say, oops. And then I say, well, next I want to see this guy primarily and this guy, but not, not much else. Uh, so that's 82 to maybe 52. I will stack with collection 52 to 82 and then projection so from the same image stack I, i've now got a two um, mm. projections um, one really shows this this artery here and this one is probably more suitable for taking a closer look at this guy yeah mm, you see what i'm doing so so you can actually extract a lot of uh, information from this massive 97 but the point here is that you will probably have to um, focus on one branch or at a time or one purpose at a time. So if you want to measure, um, I think, um, you, you might work on overall projection or projection images. If you just wanted to see that connection, then, then you might just simply work on the original image. Um, there's some good playing around yeah. um, you should do. Uh, and, and these fine ones are really quite incredibly interesting. Um, I think this capillary network um, might be something that we, we should probably think quite carefully about. Okay, so the second thing is a 3D visualization. Now, unfortunately, uh, we've only got half of this, right? So it would, it would have been nice to have a whole apical turn. Um, but it just seems to get too, too large. Uh, now, one thing that we would like to do, um, but you can also get some ideas from visualization. So under plugins and think of 3D viewer. Now, if I punch in, I think I've demoed it to you before, but if I punch it in, uh, it brings up this table. Uh, this play as a volume color name. Uh, and I'm going to say it's the sampling factor one and go OK. Now, this will take a while to visualize depending on um, your computer situation. There you go. Now, uh, you can use on, on, on Windows, you use mouse for something to zoom in and out. And this is actually a 3D volume now. So you can make a 3D model basically from this. But this background gets in the way. So I'll show one example. Um, I'm gonna do this thing called the um, thresholding. Before do that, I will make it uh, duplicate. And now I'm gonna duplicate the whole stack. Now duplicate. Um, often, because um, MSJ doesn't really have a very good undo system. Mm -hmm. So once you've changed it, that's it. Uh, it hasn't saved it, if you haven't saved, but you can't go back. So I suppose you do put it every day, do something. Uh, and I'm going to adjust the threshold. Oh. And adjust the image mode to 8 bit. And then I'm going to just threshold. Now thresholding is um, converts image any image into black and white image only. So currently this is a grey scale image uh, with variable levels of signal. 
was 8-bit image, but it's, it's converted into a simple black and white. Uh, and the good thing about it is that it becomes cleaner and uh, easier to handle. Uh, so I'm going to try that. And I am going to use automated thresholding so that um, Kotsu So that hopefully the vasculature is all red and selected as much as possible. Uh, I notice how I'm missing some of the finer vessels here. And it's not it's not all red. And apply. So that's what it's done. So now the vessels are all black, and um, this is actually the other way of what I wanted to do. So I'm going to go to invert, and now black background and white blood vessels. And then I'm going to put it here in the JD viewer. Now this should be faster. Nope. Come on, you can do it. Okay. I'm doing this. Mm. There you go. And that's really injuring and it just recorded 360 rotation. Mm. Not the best. Um, but it's a bit clearer because it's white and black. Now, just one more um, panel I want to show. So, if you go to orthogonal view and the image stacks, um, this, this gives cross sectional view here and cross sectional view here. Now, it's extremely blur uh, because you know we have a 1.69 microns per pixel resolution for X and Y, but this value becomes 6. Uh, in, the, in, in the depth wise, so it's all sort of stretched out, but but yeah, you may for some reason want to look at it. For example, so for example, I guess I guess if you wanted to see the relationship between these two here and um, the cross section, you can see if they are roughly on the same height mm -hmm. um, or different height. Mm. So that's also going to be. So, I'll get a link so you can revise it later. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. 